Hello everyone, I am Savan Singh from Inspiring Mind and I am an educator here. I am from Ternopil National Medical University and we will be going through the series of lectures and discussions on pathology and pharmacology. So we will start today with our very basic topic of pathology that is cellular response to injury and the adaptations. So as we understand that uh, there is a normal cell in our body and it does everything to maintain, uh, maintain its homeostatic function. So but anyhow in any case whatever the case is if the cell is exposed to any type of stress that I have mentioned here stress and what is stress in medical terms it is as I can define it is anything that has you know potential damaging effect or anything that can damage the cell it can be of any etiology that can be physical chemical or biological so stress can be anything that can damage the cell and what mechanism does the cell have to counter that stress to manage with that stresses obviously there is adaptations you adapt to that stress you make some structural and functional changes in the cell so that it is better able to tolerate, uh, tolerate that stress yeah and in case if the adaptations fail or it is not enough what happens is it proceeds to the cell injury lack of adaptations what is occurring cell injury and cell injury as we will discuss in our later videos whenever the cell has cell injuries there is a sequence of changes that occurs in the cell yeah normal cell and it is having sequence of structural changes physiological changes some changes occur in that cell and those changes combine uh, all together you combine those changes it is called as cell injuries okay so the changes you know the type of changes that are occurring they can be reversible or irreversible so you should have a clear cut concept that after the cell injury has occurred the type of changes that occur in the cell defines that whether the change is reversible or the injury is reversible or it is irreversible yeah so reversible and irreversible injury will have different morphological features and you'll be able to identify them but the good thing that we have is that if the injury is reversible it means that after you have removed the injurious stimuli the cell can again be a normal cell but in case the injury is irreversible what is, what is what is going to happen is that the cell will never be able to become normal so it is a very bad situation for the cell it won't be normal yeah and irreversible injury as we'll discuss it has two types apoptosis and necrosis we'll have a complete uh, discussion on these topics later on yeah apoptosis and necrosis but let me tell you in brief that when the cell dies because of some cellular processes or you know on its own as if it has committed suicide you name that process apoptosis and it is a physiological type of process you know cell have to die physiologically also not necessarily because of some pathological reason but if uh, it is necrosis then uh, the death of cell or the irreversible injury has occurred because of some pathological stimuli some pathological injurious agent and it is like as if you have murdered the cell but today's topic of discussion what we have is the stress and the adaptations yeah so we will discuss that normal cell when it is exposed to certain type of stresses what type of adaptations it has and what is the benefit of adaptations obviously adaptations help that cell to you know counter and bear that stress 
and give better response to that stress so adaptation i can define it as it they are also physiological and structural changes that occurs in normal cells in order to counter the stress yeah and we will have discussion of four types of adaptations that are there okay the first type is the hypertrophy hypertrophy you can define it as uh, you know increase size size increase in the size of cell and not the number of the cell yeah so when it is trophy it means increase in the size of cell yeah why the increase is occurring let us take the example it can be physiological or pathological increase in the you know the volume of the cell it can be physiological in what case as all of us know in gym bodybuilders you know they have load on their uh, what biceps and other muscles when they are dumbling in the gym so it's a physiological process and in order to counter and balance and you know to be adaptable to that load what happens is the skeletal muscles they undergo hypertrophy and then it is the situation when you have the cuts in the body yeah cuts in the curves and the other type of hypertrophy is pathological have you ever heard of uh, the hypertrophy of myocardium of the heart you know heart is big you know what case it can happen if there is you know increased blood pressure or increased volume overload pressure in the chambers of heart in order to counter that what happens is myocardium undergoes expansion increase in size and it is example of pathological hypertrophy yeah so i have discussed it is mostly in response to the loads as i have discussed discussed also it can be uh, you know in the influences of some growth factors or hormones for example you know the breast and the uterus lining it also enlarges in situations such as pregnancy yeah so it is the example in which the hypertrophy is because of influence of growth hormones and the factors okay then we have hyperplasia hyperplasia is increase in the cell number cell number is increasing and this process is mostly seen in the cells that have good capacity to divide yeah and hyperplasia uh, hypertrophy is seen in the cells that have limited capacity to divide skeletal muscle they don't divide very much so better they go hypertrophy and not hyperplasia whereas the hyperplasia mostly occurs in which the cells are you know able to divide very rapidly and nicely it can also be physiological and pathological physiological hyper uh, hyperplasia it is glandular epithelium of the breast undergoing hyperplasia okay in what cases during lactation because it has to produce more milk pathological hyperplasia example give me the example the example is what endometrium lining of the uterus it undergoes hyperplasia when when there is inappropriate stimulation of the uterus endometrium by excessive release of estrogen yeah and it is also the one of the what we say common uh, examples common cases in which the uterine bleeding occurs when there is excessive hyperplasia of endometrial lining of uterus because of inappropriate stimulation by the estrogen okay then we have metaplasia metaplasia i can define it as that there is change of one type of epithelium to another type of epithelium examples first columnar to squamous metaplasia what happens is you should you know first of all you should remember where is such type of metaplasia occurring columnar to squamous respiratory tract in what circumstances chronic irritation of respiratory tract by the cigarette smoking okay so columnar epithelium changes to the squamous one and squamous to the columnar uh, metaplasia it occurs in esophagus in what case acid reflux from the stomach into the esophagus what's the benefit of both of them 
the only benefit is that you know the adapted or the metaplasized cell type that is squamous and the columnar are better adapted to the stresses that is the chronic uh, chronic irritation by smoke and also by the acid yeah and the other type i will briefly discuss is atrophy it is decrease in the cell size in what cases when there is decrease in nutritional demand decrease in the blood supply to that particular tissue decrease uh, of you know hormonal stimulation and the growth factor stimulation so it can be the cases of atrophy okay so thank you everybody for watching this video have a nice day and uh, subscribe the link below and keep on watching the videos